Southwest farmers and herdsmen crisis brewing. Violence erupts as Yoruba rights activist Sunday Igboho moves to reject Fulani herdsmen settlement, Seriki from Oido State. And Buhari has disappointed many Nigerians, says Atahiru Jega. How true is this? Well, this is Plus Politics, and I am Mariana Cohn. Chief Sunday Adebo, popularly known as Sunday Boho, uh, gave a quit order to kill a herdsman in Ibarapa area of Okeogun, or your state, stating that the reason for the order was the incessant attacks on people in the Ibarapa and Okeogun areas of the state. Now, joining us to have this conversation, uh, we have Yinka Odumakin. He is the spokesperson of the Social Cultural Organization of the Yoruba People of Nigeria, Afeni Fer, and uh, political analyst, Alester Wilcox. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining us. It's my pleasure. Thanks for having me. All right, so I'm going to start with you, Mr. Odumakin, obviously, because we're talking about the Southwest here. Um, you obviously are following the stories that are emanating from both or your own do and you know the areas that surround it um what do you think about the statement by uh mr sunday i mean is it legally right should he have the right to give marching orders to people who occupy um the state just as he does and being that these people are nigerians does he have the right to do that well, we understand why Mr. Igbo is outraged, like many Yorubas, over the incessant attacks and the serious assaults on the people. Uh, it has become too much. And the Fulanis, who are the Maridas, have been taking the food for a, for a ride. They violated the people in the serious ways. And though we have spoken with Mr. Boho privately and publicly, in a way that we don't have a total breakdown of law and order, because what the poor are doing, if if the if poor are to react in like manners, there will break down of law and order, which is not being the interest of the country. We have leadership responsibility to ensure that this does not happen. While at the same time, we must protect our people against assaults and violations by these headsmen. This has gone too much, and we cannot take it anymore. I have so many questions I want to ask, but quickly, we'll just take a quick break, and uh, when we come back, we'll continue that conversation. Stay with us. You're still watching Plus Politics uh, on Plus TV Africa. Now we're still talking about this situation in the southwest, of course, uh, farmers and herders. And we're still being joined via Zoom um, by uh, a Fanny Ferris spokesperson, Yinka Dumaki, and political analyst, Alester Wilcox. Now, Mr. Dumaki, before we went on that break, I did ask a question and you were attempting to answer that question. And you said the people are sick and tired of the situation that's been taking place in the southwest. Is it the job of Mr. Ido Iyoho to make that, give that ultimatum? What about security agencies in the country? What about the governor of the state? Shouldn't that be, that onus be on the legal authority in the state to take such a drastic step? Again, what is the position of uh, Mr. Sunday in that state in terms of the legality of what he did? Well, Mr. Sunday Bo is an individual, and that's the reason why we have spoken with him. That as an individual, he should temper his uh, utterances. It's not as if we don't understand why he's outraged and why he's leading the battle. But we also have leadership responsibility to ensure that there is no breakdown of law and order. While the government of Nigeria has not behaved 
responsibly the way it should over this matter. It do, the reason why you have government so is to moderate between all interests. So but we have the government of Nigeria taking sides with the headsmen, which is not good for the polity, which is not conducive to peace and harmony. The, the, what government should be doing at this moment is to enforce law and order, not to back the headsmen to disobey lawful authorities like the Kegarba Shu has done with the uh, Northern Leaders Forum and the uh, Arab Council Forum. That's not how to build an inclusive society. It is because we want an inclusive society that we are appealing that this matter should be handled in a more, much more mature way in the interest of peace, stability, and justice. Uh, you cannot just sit, get up and say that you are his men. You want to occupy the forest. You are not. You are not animals who can just be roaming about in the bush. If you want to roam, graze animals, apply for land from the government. They give you a land to graze your animals, but don't become nuisance to your host communities. Okay, let me go to Alasta now, uh, Mr. Wilcox. You are an outsider looking in. Um, let's take a general overview now. Just last week, um, the situation in Ondo State, of course, Governor Kiri Dulu had issued also an ultimatum of sorts to these herders on their reserves. And he had said that if they do not abide by those rules and regulations, of course, they will be sacked from the state. Um, what best approach do you think that can be taken or should have been taken? Because as a result of Governor Kerry Dolu's um, ultimatum, the presidency re had responded, um, Arua Consultative Forum had responded, and this has not really sat well with Nigerians in general. What do you think, what path do you think they should have taken in dealing with this without well, whipping up sentiments? Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Well, I'm not an outsider looking in. Um, I'm an interested party because I'm a Yoruba by affiliation, by association, by residence, by ideology, and all that you can think about. I'm fully Yoruba. I see that. So, uh, and as a Nigerian, I am affected by what happens every part. I live in Ibadan. I did my youth, since my youth service days, I've been stuck in Ibadan. Uh, Lagos is just my second home. So, and I've traversed every nook and crannies of the of uh, the Western Nigeria. I can mention every 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 cities, every villages, from Lagos up to up to anywhere in the Ondo state, in the Kiti state, up to the utmost end. So I have traversed very well around the southwest. So I'm a western, I'm a southwesterner. Okay. By association or whatnot. So the situation really is very fluid, and um, I'm happy my brother Nyinka is speaking in this calm manner that he's speaking about the situation, and that gives me some level of comfort to the extent that uh, what is happening in your state does not command the to tell uh, uh, the, the acceptance of, um, of the Yorubas, because I know Yorubas to be a tribe that you don't toy with in the country. Um, what happened in those states, for me, is quite un unfortunate, because um, the governor is the chief security officer of the state, and he has every constitutional right to protect the territory of those states. And so if he found, if he discovered anybody or any threat to the stability, peace, and well-being of Ondo State, he has adequate powers and responsibility to take adequate action. Now, that action, is it in line with peace and stability? It's what everybody should be looking at. Uh, unfortunately, the presidency responded too sharply and too hastily, I must say. Sharply and too hastily. And rather than addressing the concerns of uh, Governor Kredolu, uh, the presidency, through Garabashewu, was beginning to talk about constitutional and legality and all what not, which for me, it's overblogging the issue. Uh, two runs does not, does not make a right in any situation. While uh, everybody, including myself, including the Pulani, including the Igbo, the Hausa, the Yoruba, anybody has every constitutional right to stay any part of the country and carry out legitimate business. If there be any criminality by anybody, that criminality must be brought to the fore and dealt with as individual, not as a tribe. 
Because the, for me, the truth of the matter is, what has escalated this problem is the fact that in the last few years, let's say the last six years or so, we have, we have unwittingly classified kidnapping and violent crime to the Fulanese. And we have tagged the Fulanese, the Fulani headsmen, the only perpetrators of such heinous and criminal uh, 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 and, the, and, the, and the violent crime, which I have said this in Bella's for us, we are doing the wrong thing. When we do this, when we stigmatize and, and profile a particular tribe as the criminals in a particular, of a particular crime or a particular part of criminality, then we are giving an express car, a fast express car to the perpetrators to ride on and to escape justice while Al we look at the wrong place. Alastair, I'd like to ask a question. And in, uh, and in saying this, I, I think I have questioned you about this over and over again. Yes, um, the Fulanese have been given somewhat of a bad name um, when it comes to being herders. But we also know that the herders are mostly Fulanese. And if there be a particular group of people who are trying to make these herders look bad, should, it not, should the onus not be on the, the herders to try as much as possible to make sure that these people who are perpetrating crime in their name be fished out so that they can reclaim their good name? Should that not be something they would want to do or should do to no, save their name? The, 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 the fact is, I, I, I don't know, I'm, I don't even know the organization. I, I, mean, I, wish them, I don't know them. I've never spoken for them. I've never met one before. So I, I do not know their command and control structure. But the fact remains that um, no individual... But they do have a structure. Are, but at least you do know that they have a structure, don't you? No, I know that, but I don't know their command and control and their powers to control or to fish out criminality. Because they are not the police. They are not supposed to pursue crime or pursue criminals. But it's, it's, it's not to say there are no members, there are no members of their community that are criminals. Of course there are. It's just, but the fact, what I'm saying is, by the time the profiling comes becomes real, which I started say about six years ago, the profiling of every criminality, especially in the southwest, in the south becomes a tag for it's only the Fulani <coughs> headsmen. Then things like this are bound to occur. Because we're not, we're, because we're not broadening up our horizon, opening up our minds to the fact that there are Yoruba criminals, there are Igbo criminals, there are rivers, I'm from River State, there are rivers criminals, there are elk type criminals in this same Southwest committing this same crime. And rather than us broadening our mind, we now target any time there's kidnapping, Anytime there is assault, anytime there is, we say it is your bad headsman. All and right. I, I'd like to, I'd like to, I'd like to run some things by you, and then of course I'll ask Mr. Dumakin to also interject. Now, Ibarapa, Okeogun have been fingered as some of the most troubled spots in or your state. Very unsafe areas. Um, kidnappings and killings have happened. I'll give you a name. Uh, a, a particular doctor, Fatai uh, Aborodu, was kidnapped and killed allegedly by herders. Um, um, and, and there are people who have said that, you know, many of these kind of things have happened. And Mr. Sunday has, has also um, laid out names and people who went to their farms, who their farms were destroyed by cattle and in going to reports that hey this is what happened to my farm they're either um, macheted they're either beaten or killed now do we have the facts on ground no but we have people who have been killed allegedly by herders has any investigation taken place so that this there be a follow-up to find out who the people are behind this no why has there been a code of silence of sorts? I'm going to start with you, Mr. Duma King, because this is, this is also now happening in your ter territory. It's happened in other parts of the country, but it's come down to the southwest. Why has there been a code of silence for so long now that he has, it has deteriorated? Uh, one man has decided to give an ultimatum. Another governor has said, well, this is, this is how the rules are going to be from now going forward. Why did we have to wait for this long for things to get out of hand to realize that we would have had to nip it in the, do, uh, in the bud before now? Because there's a, there has been sinful silence on the part of the authorities in Nigeria. But for the Afeni Ferrier, why, why, if, I mean, the, government might not be feeling the pain or the pinch 
as the people in those areas affected, especially for your people uh, under the Afeniferi group? Why has the Afeniferi been very silent? Even if the government was silent, why were your people silent? We have, we have not been silent. We have been very loud and clear about this matter. That this is what things will get to this point. At the point where people say enough is enough, which is what is happening, and we are trying to beat them so that there will be no virtual breakdown of law and order. It's because government has refused to be governmental. And when individuals begin to take actions on their own, we, you may have actions that are overreaching, which is what you don't want. But if you look at what has happened, over three years ago, our three years ago, the, the daughter of a very, very leader was killed in a raid. When she was killed, and the brother Kept the fashion to go there to take the cops. The policeman told him she was killed by her men, and that's how they operate in that area. We put this out. We asked the police to release statement he made. Somebody even went there and said that, oh, where are the hair men? But what happened last year? When the killers of Funke were, arre were arrested by SARS, they happen to be Fulani, not only Fulani, Meitiala members. And Oba, Ufo, 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 was killed in the afternoon, which back. So I just, just made many white claims of profiling a group because they are not part of us. We know what's going on in those areas. You know, you know, you know you're in another part of Yoruba. Don't forget, not even as a Yoruba land, in Benue State, in January 2018, when Fulani has killed 78 people one day in Benue State, the governor was summoned to the villa and was told to go and learn how to live in peace with those who are killing his people. It's because the Nigerian government has been siding with these criminals that has emboldened them to think that they can do anything and get away with it. And we are saying the lives of our people, the lives, it matter. And that's why we say that we understand perfectly why people like Sunday Bo and other people are outraged. Although we are trying our, our possible best to ensure that things do not get out of hand. Okay, uh, uh, back to you, Alester. Do you, do you agree? Because he's saying that government should have done better when it started before it came down to the southwest because you were accusing um the southwest or, and the whole nation of labeling a group of people as criminals but then there are facts to prove that this has happened uh, some of the people who were arraigned were herders and let's not forget there's so many stories i i don't want to go through the list of names i have a list of names you know right in front of me but there are several no, things to consider uh, we can go, go ahead. All the names. We, we can go through all the list of names. I'm not here to defend anybody. I'm, I don't know any any Hessman. I don't know. I'm not. I don't know any. Um, I've not seen one one criminal that I've not seen. I don't know the command structure of Metial or anybody. I'm not seeing uh, people any Hessman are not criminals. Uh, there are no criminal elements among them. Uh, just like me asking you now, those that were kidnapping cross river state, are they planning as men that kidnap them? The people that are kidnapping river state that are happening till tomorrow, are they planning as men too? So, but what I'm saying is, we have, we seem to have since about six years ago, precisely. The the problem with the problem with the, this problem of headers farmers didn't start today. I remember in 2001 or 2000, we had 2001. This same problem happened in Okogo, and the late Lama Deshino was the governor for your state. This same problem occurred, this same uh, situation occurred. And uh, uh, even this current president and uh, Buba Marwa came down to mediate and, and create peace among them. It has happened in Yewala in Ogun state. It has happened. So it's not a new thing. Um, do I like it? Of course not. So it's not a problem that anybody will say government is encouraging Fulani uh, Hesmen to perpetrate crime. I wouldn't buy that. The fact is, the fact is, 
We have, that's what I say, we have seen you wouldn't that. buy that, but then the response that was given from the presidency recently when a governor of a state have, decided to issue a statement. That response. Yeah, but, but, the, but, but that know, could also know. be misconstrued as the government I being know, in support know, of a gang way, of people who are perpetrating will. violence in areas that have opened their doors to them, wouldn't it? No, 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 no. I don't, I don't, I'm not, I'm not in doubt of the fact that we have cohabited with ourselves for years. This, this, this headers has been in those areas for this, all this while. They've not, they are not new. They didn't come into those areas newly. I mean, headers have, I mean, as, as little as when I was a small boy, back in my, in my, in my river state, I've been seeing headers all over the place. So it's not a new business. I've been hearing headers, farmers, clashes. It's not today. It all right. started under Mohamed Buhari's government. Okay. But, but in fact, when we say, when, when, when we now turn the table around and begin to, uh, begin to make that those uh, those those comments justifiably yes but are they real facts of course we, it, it depends to be argued i'm not here to make difference by anybody. all right let's start. I, I, I need to go back to mr dumakin now I, ha I have another question for du mr others, dumakin yeah. thank you alesta um mr dumakin there are several things to consider in um mr sunday igboho's account of visiting the seriki uh, in, in his area, um, like from the reports that these um, uh, Fulani herders in those southwest states have given, they're saying that they have lived in these states for so long, they've cohabited. In fact, some of them are laying claim to land. Now I'm asking this, and I'm going to ask the same question to Alester. If the tables were turned and the roles were reversed, could could this be obtained in other parts of the country, especially where the Syracuse are from? And what's the relationship, and what has the relationship been from time up until now? I mean, because we know that before President Buhari uh, became the president, we hardly had these kind of clashes. Um, but now it's become more like a, an everyday story in our national dailies, even on the news. Making both Yoruba land has been a very, very accommodating space. The no visitor will say that he is not welcome in the area, but the Fulani uh, herdsmen, a lot of them have become so much more emboldened under this administration, and this administration has not hidden the fact that it is encouraging them or shielding them when they commit crimes. How exactly, at, how exactly what, is the what, administration what encouraging now? and when shielding When the government them? made a love for that, it was Garba Shew. My brother, unless I was saying that he does not know now who thought he made it, Garba Shew made that statement. It's only the president. The president has not removed him. If he's not making his name of the president, the president has, will have removed him. He has not done so. Which means he's acting on behalf of the president who is the, who is the grand patron of Meiti Allah. And as a clash between his role as commander-in-chief and the grand patron of Meiti Allah. He's mistaking those two roles together. That's what we are saying. And that's the problem we are having. Interesting. Alastair, would you like to respond to that? Yes. Uh, yes, thank you. I also know that... Uh, Atiku Abubakar is also a grand patron of Meiti Allah. Uh, at one point, uh, John, good luck, Jonathan was made a grand patron, a patron of Meiti Allah, and decorated in public. So um, I don't, uh, so I, I, I don't want to tie President Muhammad Buhari's member uh, patronship of Meiti Allah to the fact that he is encouraging people to commit crime in a country where he's a commander in chief. I wouldn't buy that total, uh, in, in all ramifications. Uh, I, what, what I, I see, I see, I see politics at play, but I would downplay that part of it because, and I want to correct you, my dear. You said before now, you don't what hear is, such. I'm sorry, uh, what is political? I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Alester, quickly because we're out of time. What is political about people being killed and um, people no, being no. asked to not graze in government reserves? What is no, political you, no, about you see, it? The, you see, you, you see, no, you no, made, no, no. What no, is political about that? That, 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 was, that, was, that was totally wrong. You said before. No, no, Alester, Alester, quickly, please. Now. Can you answer this question? What is political 
about being asked not to graze in government reserves, so people being killed allegedly by herders. Is that political? Are you making, are you already giving judgment? No, but you just said it. You said that there is no, a political you, aspect to it, and I'm asking. No, 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 no. Are you giving you judgment? made this statement, and I'm asking you. Are you giving judgment? No, 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 no. Alesta, uh, this is, I, I, so, uh, let's have a conversation. Are you no, no. I think, I think, I think you are passing judgment. Are you, are you saying Alaba will not kill on the streets? No, 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 no. Uh, Inka, I'm not saying that. I'm not, see, in all my submissions, I've never, yeah. I've never contraverted anything. I'm only okay. saying let's be broad-minded. She said... Well, okay, you just said now, that there, there's a political blacks. aspect, and, and I'm asking you... I 2002, under Lama Deshino. I made a mention of 2000... Uh, of, 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 of Darie, well, Alesta, Darie, we have to Darie, go. Unfortunately, we're out of time. Thank you very much. Um, to be, to be Alesta Wilcox so is a political analyst. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. Of course, Nika Dumaki is a spokesperson for Afeni Ferrer. Uh, we have to wrap up that conversation at this point. We'll take a short break, and when we come back, we'll be talking about a former INEC chairman, Atahiru Jega, who has labelled President Buhari's government as a disappointment to many Nigerians. We'll be right back after this break.